Same. We start with a regular shape first. So for regular shape, yes, we have to remember formulas again. For block or tube, they are actually the same. It's length times width times height. But for cube, they are all just the same number, but still you're applying the same formula, length times width times height. So that's for block or cube. Next, if you are talking about sphere, sphere is 4 over 3 pi r cube. Okay, 4 over 3 pi r cube. And next, cylinder. The formula for the volume of cylinder is pi r square h. R stands for radius, H stands for height, like the figure shown over here. Okay? And the last regular shape, which is a cone. Okay? Over here, the volume of a cone is one third pi r square H. So these four formulas, these four new formulas, you have to remember for cube or block for sphere for cylinder and for cones. So how are you going to measure irregular shape? First, we must have a measuring cylinder with certain amount of liquid inside. And we put, okay, and we get a reading, 55 cm cube. And we put the irregular shape stone or whatever object into submerge the whole object into the water and then we get a reading again, 70 cm cube, for example. Then the volume of the irregular shaped stone will be the difference between the two readings. Make sense? So it's 70 minus 55, which gives us 15 cm cube. Okay, yeah? So another way of measuring an irregular shape, we can use a Eureka can, which is this one, okay? So you can pour water inside until the maximum level. Because the design of this one, it can only have a that's the height. If you pour more water inside, it will automatically flow out from this small tube. Okay? So we are going to make a setup like this. And we submerge the stone into the canister into the can, Eureka can. So that water will leak out and then flow into this measuring cylinder. So when, in the end, after everything is finalized, whatever reading I have from the measuring cylinder is exactly the volume of the stone, volume of the irregular shaped solid. Okay, so without doing any subtraction, I can straightway get the reading, which is probably 15 cm cube again. Okay, so that's the two ways of measuring a irregular shaped solid or irregular shaped stone. But you may be wondering if the object I measure can float on water how? If for example stone, it can be submerged fully. But if I measure a wooden block, then how am I supposed to submerge the whole wooden block? So the matter is over here. Similarly, we set up this Eureka can and machine cylinder set up, okay? And instead of having just pure water inside the can, we have a water and a weight over here. Then the water level is of certain height, okay? So we get a reading from here. That's our reading one. The reading one is actually the volume of the weight, the block weight. Okay, step one. Step two, we tie on the same string, the styrofoam or wooden block onto the weight and submerge both of them into the water so that more liquid will flow out, right? And over here, we have a reading two. 
the difference between R2 and R1 is actually the volume of the floating wooden block of floating styrofoam. So that's the method how we measure irregular shape object but which may be floating. So we give them a weight to make sure we can submerge both together.